What's up fam, Jason is back again. Today's video, we're gonna be doing a test and going over another function of the Radiolink RC6 GS V2, and we're gonna be using the Vanquish VS410 Black along with the Outcast 8S to set up this test and show you yet another function of this feature pack transmitter that will allow you to control two different RCs with one transmitter. Stick around till after we roll that intro footage. Production. All right, fam, as I said before, we're gonna go over another feature, yet another feature of this Radiolink RC6S G2 version two transmitter from Radiolink. And that function is what they deem as ID seed. But before we get into that, let me thank each and every one of you for following Jason S Productions, for sticking with us, for rocking with us. We really appreciate it. Today we're talking about ID seed. ID seed for the Radiolink RC6 GS version two is a way for you to control multiple RCs, surface and marine, with one controller. Now some of you may say, well that's easy, I can do that with any of my other controllers, I just have to bind another receiver to the controller. That is true, but one vehicle has to be off in order for the other vehicle to work. With ID Seed, that is not true. Both vehicles can be on and transmitting and receiving at the same time. This is a practical application, mainly for boaters. So for instance, here's the example. You run your boat out on the water, it dies for some reason. The motor dies, but it's still on. How do you get it? You don't have a friend with you there to go out there and get it. You don't have someone else with their own one-to-one -one full size boat to go out there and grab it, but you do have another boat that you can go out and push it back or tug it back with. Well, if you have IDC selected, you can cut on the other boat, switch over to that vehicle, run it out, grab your vote, bring it back home safely, shut it down, and all is well. I'm gonna show you how to do that. I don't have any boats, but you can do that with vehicles too. So I'm gonna show you how to set it up on the transmitter, then we're gonna go on location, do a quick practical exercise so you can see it in effect. And then maybe if you wanna do the same, you can pick up one of these, get you a couple of receivers, and you're good. So let's go over to the bench so I can show you how to set it up on the transmitter and how to bind your receiver to the transmitter. Let's go. All right, back to the transmitter. I just wanted to show you this step by step. So if you haven't programmed your transmitter yet to add a RC to it, now you know how. It's pretty simple, binding is a piece of cake. So again, we're gonna go back to the menu for the RC6GS. Again, enter and exit key at the same time brings us into the menu and we want to go down to menu item 22 and 22 is for the IDC. Select that menu item, press enter. Once you get here, you'll see IDC, the mode and the actual seed number. I've already bound this to ID02 for this process, but I'll show you how to do it. You want to turn on the mode by hitting enter, then plus to turn the mode on, then hit enter again. Now the mode for ID02 is on, you go back to your transmitter, excuse me, your receiver, and you bind it to the transmitter. Once you bind it to the transmitter, it's going to pick up that this receiver is now on ID02, and if the IDC mode is set to on, on only this particular RC will work as long as the mode is on and you have ID02 selected. So again, I've already done this process. Everything is set up and works. Now we're gonna take this out on location to the field so you can see how this works between what I have set up and the Outcast 8S, and we'll show you a practical example of how this comes into play. So let's head out to the field. All right, fam, Jay Sister, here we are out on location. We got the Armor 8S Outcast, and we also got the Vanquish VS410 Black. And these are the two test vehicles we're gonna to use today to test out the IDC function on the Radiolink RC6GS version two. So what we're gonna do is a simple test. We're gonna take one vehicle out. We have a GoPro set up out here. All right, and this GoPro is set up approximately 130 feet from our start point right there. So we're gonna run one vehicle out to the GoPro. 
stop it, simulate a problem, then we're going to switch over with the IDC and run the other vehicle out with the same controller and hopefully everything works out smooth. So let's go back and show you what we're using and get this test started. Again, we're gonna get this test started. We're only gonna be using one controller today. That's it, one transmitter, that's it. Two vehicles, one transmitter, two different receivers in the same receiver family group. And that's how we're gonna get this test to work. So let me swap the camera so you can see the controller we're using. We've already seen it. I just wanna give you proof that we're not trying to fool you. So let's swap the cam. And again, fam, this is the only controller we're using, the Radio Link. RC6 GSV2 and on front we're going to have the Insta360 Go 2 to get a little few action shots and again today's video is just a test to show you how we swap over with the IDC so without any further ado let's swap cameras I'm going to apologize again for the windiness up front not much I can do about that let's swap the cams get the vehicles running and do this All right, fam, so now we're gonna simulate a breakdown or some sort of mishap with the VS410 Black, you know, the Vanquish VS410. Go out here to the cam so you can see exactly where she's at. That way you'll know I'm not trying to trick you at all with this test so that everything is legit. All right, let me turn my cam around. Okay, here we go, fam, VS410 still on and running. You may be able to see the headlights, maybe not. Here's our GoPro. Here's a wider shot. And this is where our simulated breakdown is. So now we're gonna go back to the transmitter, flip a few switches, and they get this IDC function to work. Let's get back. All right, and this may be a little difficult to see, but you see we got the VS410 on ID02. So we're gonna go ahead and change that over to the Outcast, which is gonna be ID01. All right, so I switched it over to the menu and I'm at menu function number 22, which is IDC. I'm going to leave it on the VS410. All right, let me exit out so you can see that. We're still on the VS410. Let me see if I can do this with one hand. Back in the menu, we're at IDC now. We're going to hit enter. IDC is on, but now we're going to go down to the seed number and we're going to change that to one and enter. Now you can still see the VS410 is still sitting out there, no problems. Now we're gonna cut on the 8S Outcast and send it out. So let's get that set up. All right, fam, we got the 8S Outcast all powered up. I'm gonna show you the transmitter once again. We have the VS410 labeled, but now we're on IDC01. So now when I manipulate the transmitter, the only thing that should function are the functions of the 8S Outcast. So let's turn the wheel. Look at that. Again, you see the screen, VS410, IDC01. Our VS410 is sitting out there. So let's drive the outcast out and hopefully nothing else moves. Check it out. Fam, I think that is a success. We see that the IDC function works. The 8S Outcast and the VS410 Black are both on, both receiving signals from the transmitter, but one signal is only going through, and that is to the 8S Outcast. I'm gonna prove it to you as I'm sitting right here. I'm turning the wheel, nothing. The only thing you see moving is the 8S Outcast. Look at that, no movement whatsoever from the VS410 Black. It's all 8S Outcast. Let me drive her off. Just the Outcast, not the VS410, and we're even in close proximity 
to each other. Everything is working just fine. Look at that. We have, we have a successful test. The IDC functionality works. For those of you that boat, this is great for you. For land vehicles, maybe not so much, but boating, this is a perfect, perfect addition for you to ensure that you're able to bring your boat back. That is if you have two boats and you're out by yourself. So I'm gonna switch this back to the VS410 by going into the menu, going to ID seed. We're gonna switch the seed from one to two. Hit enter. And now when we go back to the main menu, the only thing that should move, look at that. I'm controlling two RCs almost simultaneously with one transmitter and there's your proof folks. Our test is a success. can't ask for no better than that a positive successful test right off with the radio link romeo charlie golf sierra six or excuse me six sierra victor deuce hey we're good fam everything works perfectly now let's have a little fun and just drive the outcast around peace you know one other thing let's just make sure you really know i'm not trying to trick you I'm going to stand right here. Hopefully the GoPro is picking me up. I'm going to drive the Vanquish VS410 back, leave the Outcast here, then switch over and drive it back all on the same controller. Hopefully you're seeing this right here. I'm not tricking you. So let's take the VS410 back right now. Remember folks, this is 130 feet of range. This is nothing for these RCs and transmitters and the VS410 is back at home. Now we're going to switch over to ID01 for the ID seed function. And now we should have functionality for the outcast only. We're going to drive it and we do a successful test. There we have it. I think that was a very successful test of the RC6GS Victor Deuce. All right, this controller right here, great controller. Sold out RC, you're getting a dope controller, my friend. And if anyone else has any questions or doubts about this controller, set them to the side because this controller is the real deal. It's the Holyfield right here, the real deal. So we got a successful test with both the Vanquish VS410 and the Arma Outcast 8S testing out the IDC function on the RC6 Golf Sierra version 2. You can't get no better than that. It is an excellent controller and that function can become valuable for boaters. If you're a boater, man, that is gonna be something that could potentially save you a lot of money. And at the same time, I know a lot of you out there probably can find some creative ways in order to use this for your surface vehicles as well. You know, maybe you're trying to simulate a run of a vehicle that's broke down on the trail and you got a winch on one and you're the only cameraman there. So you only have your camera and your controller, but now you can use one controller, two vehicles, as long as they have the radio link type receivers in them, as long as they're bound to the RC6GS Victor 2, and as long as you have the ID seat functionality set up correctly, this could become invaluable to a lot of you content creators who are doing this solo. So again, this is a dope controller, and I gotta say thanks again to Radio Link. They have been super, super generous and kind to this channel, even though we're a very small channel, they gave us a break that a lot of the bigger manufacturers out there normally give to the bigger channels, but they 
gave Jay Sinister Productions a break, and I thank them for all of their kindness. This ID seed function, invaluable. All right, fam, I've talked enough. Let's head back to the studio. All right, fam, there we have it, another successful test. Now, needless to say, this is a great feature for this controller, and this controller is packed with a lot of more features than just that, but I thought that this would be a feature that I should go over, and Radio Link reached out to me and asked me to do a video going over this a little bit more in depth. Thanks, Radio Link. Jason is Productions really appreciates everything you've done for us, and we hope that we can establish a long-term relationship. So fam, as always, I'm going to end this. Always be you, do you, and stay true. I am Jay of Jay Sinister Productions, exiting stage left. Ch-ch-ch-ch-ch-ch-ch-ch-ch-ch-ch-ch-ch-ch-ch-ch-ch-ch-ch-ch-ch-ch-ch-ch-ch-ch-ch-ch-ch-ch-ch-ch-ch-